about 10 seconds. And in five, four, three, two, and one. One. Hey, won the bird your Music Central as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Welcome back to the action, folks. I am Ryan Gildersleeve, your play-by-play -play broadcaster for all of tonight's action, alongside Michael Jones as we get ready for the beginning of this game between the Central Washington Wildcats and the Seattle Pacific Falcons. Folks, it has been a great night of action so far as the women just finished up their game, winning at by a score of 71 to 61 and pushing themselves just a little bit further in terms of conference play. Folks, tonight, the Central Washington Wildcat men's team has an opportunity to push themselves back to even on the season. Uh, opportunity to move to 2-2, two and two, as before they did sit at 1-2 and two after the loss just a couple of days ago. Now, folks, this was a team that just two days ago, if you had watched that game, you'd have known if they were able to connect with a couple of their shots from a very specific demographic, that game could have gone a very different way. And I'd like to just take a second to talk about that now, because folks, this is the way that this team works. There are so many gifted shooters on the roster that whoever you have, if they're making their way to the perimeter, they're going to be able to put up a shot. So, if you're going to give them the opportunity to consistently rain down these three-pointers, one would have to easily assume you've got to be able to make them. Now, just two days ago, we were unable to see a consistent strand of shooting, as it was really just kind of a back and forth, everyone's going to shoot, and if it makes it, it makes it kind of deal. Folks, the Wildcats shot a lot of three-pointers two days ago against the Yellow Jackets, and they made two of them. That's right, two of them throughout the course of the entire game. So the key to tonight's action for the Wildcats, shoot from beyond the arc, make your shots from beyond the arc, and you don't really have a lot to worry about. Folks, this is a team that is so gifted in scoring that if you were to put them out on the court and tell them you are only allowed to score from the left side, they would probably still be able to put up a very solid scoring margin. The issue is, they get in their heads very quickly. Now, playing at home and playing in front of a crowd which expects you to win, especially when you're holding a winning streak like a couple of days ago they were, is definitely a, a situation which is less than ideal to be in for the player. But I will say, tonight we face off against a team which is going to be a matchup that we haven't seen so far on the season. So this Seattle Pacific University definitely has a few different, uh, just a few different, uh, how, how would you put it, a few different categories of the game which they excel at and Michael I was wondering if you'd be able to give me an insight into what Seattle Pacific may bring against Central Washington tonight. Well and I know you were just talking about it and then you talked at length about it in different games I've been able to broadcast with you. We are going to see a lot of rain. Bring out your umbrellas because these two teams are going to shoot it from deep often. They combined average 52 three-point attempts per game so you're talking a lot of shots are taken. Whether or not they're falling we're going to see a lot of threes tonight, so that is going to be a huge key as well, because not only does Central shoot it, SPU shoots it even more, as the fact that the Wildcats have been hitting theirs at about 30% so far this season. The Falcons have been hitting it at 38%, which, that's going to be dangerous. If you cannot slow them down and force it inside, the Falcons are going to make you pay if they hit those open shots, and a lot of it comes down to their leading scorer so far this season, Shaw Anderson, averaging 21 points per game and knocking down about about a one and a half threes per game as well, but he's shown the ability to hit shots consistently when given the opportunity, not just this season, but previously. So it'll be interesting to see how the Wildcats are able to key in because he's really their main scorer. They have a couple other guys hitting in about 10 point, 8 point range, but when you have a guy averaging 20 a game, he has to be the top of your scouting report, and the Wildcats are going to have to key in on him because if he is not contained, the Falcons could be running away with this game by half. That they could. And, you know, Michael, I wanted to just kind of take some attention and bring it to the one, one, one little bit thing that I was able to notice before this game started. When I was doing my preparation for the game, there was one specific stat category that I looked at, and the averages just don't line up when you look at these two teams. And that is in the span of rebounds. If you look at rebounding, these two teams play it very differently. The Seattle Pacific Falcons average about 33 rebounds per game. Central Washington 
Average is about 38. So Central definitely with an opportunity to command the boards tonight. And if they can do that, then that's going to give them more opportunities than they could ever ask for to score the basketball. Now, there is guys like Shaw Anderson and a couple of other players on Seattle Pacific's roster that are quite gifted with the rock. But I will say, if Central Washington is able to not only command the rebounds, but still be able to be efficient from beyond the arc, this is a runaway game for the Wildcats, and I don't see anything that's going to stop that. I think rebounding and ball handling and ball management is going to be a huge part of this game as well because as you brought up rebounding, the Wildcats rebound at a much higher rate, especially on the offensive side. On the offensive boards, the Wildcats have been averaging about 10 offensive boards per game. You're talking second chance points, putbacks, whatever you can, just extending possessions. Those are going to come in key for the Wildcats in trying to put those shots up because if they can't hit at the same clip, as the Falcons, you might as well match them in shot, raw numbers, that efficiency, right. where on the other hand, we just talked about it, we were talking about the women's game earlier, both today and on Thursday, and the men's game on Thursday, making sure you are taking care of the ball, assist to turnover ratio is a huge thing. The Wildcats have done an actually solid job so far this season, while SPU has shown a weakness, only 12 assists to 13 turnovers, they have a negative assist to turnover ratio, so if the Wildcats can make that a key in this game, able to force mistakes, force turnovers, and turn them into points on the other end. Like we said, it may not be the efficiency that makes it do. It may be the raw numbers, but whatever puts a win in the column for either of these two teams, you don't care how you get there. You care about how you finish. Absolutely. And with the Wildcats having a chance to even themselves out in terms of conference play, you can't imagine that they will be playing tonight anything less than aggressive. Folks, we're going to be back in just a few minutes as we prepare for the beginning of this matchup between Central Washington University and Seattle Pacific. Folks, for Ryan Gildersleeve and Michael Jones, we'll be right back.
about 20 seconds. Four, three, two, one. One. 88 won the bird. Your Music Central and the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Ryan Gildersleeve, joined tonight by Michael Jones for all of tonight's action. Folks, we are less than 30 seconds away from tip-off as your Central Washington Wildcats take on Seattle Pacific University. That is right. The Falcons have already suffered a loss today by the hand of the Wildcats as the Lady Cats win 71-61 to in what was a stunner of a matchup between two very good teams. Now, Central Washington, of course, taking the win in that first matchup, flipping on its head what we saw on Thursday. Now, the men's team has a chance to go in and completely rewrite that story as they face off against a Falcon team that, statistically at least, doesn't match up well against the Wildcats. I know, and this is going to be a very fun matchup, I think, because, like you the matchup doesn't really matter sometimes when it comes to rivalry games like this. We've seen time after time, and I mentioned it before the women's game, when it comes to Central versus SPU, it doesn't feel like as big a rivalry game to some people as Western. Oh, that's the rival. I don't right. know. This uh, this Falcons program, when it comes to both men's and women's basketball, is chippy. Every game is physical. Every game is close. You can throw the record. You can throw everything out the window because whatever the game is going to end up, it's going to be decided in the next 40 minutes. Right. And you know, one thing that I really do think deserves a little bit of attention is last game what we were able to see towards the end of the game definitely was Central just had, knows how to get under the skin of their competitors. Multiple technical fouls called at the end of that game last uh, just this Thursday and folks if tonight Central Washington is able to not only get under the skin but into the heads of their opponents it's all over from there. When you've got guys like the guys that make up this Central Washington roster you have the ability to attack every single bit, not only of the court but of your opponent. You have the opportunity to get into their head and let them know that they're not going to get past you. When you've got guys like Mitch Brizzy and Samad Hector occupying the post where practically no rebounds are going to go the other way, or you've got the interior defense that's brought to you by those same guys, then you have a man like Colby Jeanette come into the game whose height definitely throws people off, but then you find out that he's a great shooter from beyond the arc and that can be one of the scariest things for an opposing team. Central Washington is a roster filled with wild cards and tonight we'll get to see just how many of them are in play. I think what's going to be a key note we mentioned in the pregame is going to be how do the matchup of the biggest names for these two teams go. Shaw Anderson for the Falcons, a 6'7 forward who can run like a guard and post up like a post. I think he's going to have a big night and it comes down to can the Wildcats limit that big night. There are different levels. There's a 40 point, there's a 20 point. Can they keep him on the lower end of what he's going to do and on the other side of it Samad Hecker has been a great piece for this team and really has been taking off as a leader in this team after a strong freshman year I think he is going to have a similarly big game tonight it's going to come down to can he match up well with Anderson with the Falcons and really put a mark on this central team tonight and folks we are ready for the game to begin 20 minutes loaded on the clock that's right for those of you who do not know Central, or not just Central Washington, but all of college basketball operates on a bit different of a system between men's and women's games. Men's games operate on the have system, while women's games operate on the quarter system. Tonight, we're going to get to see the Wildcats operate with the 20-minute sets for the first and second halves. And folks, we are ready as Samad Hector takes the court, takes the center of the court for this here tip-off. I would say you are going to want to key into this game because whatever happens is going to be very interesting and hopefully on our end, very entertaining. One could hope as now here's the tip-off. Ball is up and Samad Hector brings it in. Seth Dawson with the ball for the Wildcats to start it off. Now here's Dawson coming up. He's going to hand this one off to Cameron McNeil. McNeil now out to Clark. Clark's going to give it to Maverick Sanders. Sanford there's now with the ball. He gives it to Samad Hector. Samad Hector, a great three-point shooter, also a great slasher. He gives this one to Cameron McNeil, who could also fit that same description. Now tossed out to Maverick Sanders. Mid-range shot is up. This one is off, though, and the rebound will fall to the Falcons. Going to need to look for better shots right there for the Wildcats. That mid-range is not going to work early on against the Falcons' defense. And now the Wildcats playing some aggressive defense here as Jordan Clark 
Clark locks up his opponent here, and it's going to be a quick and easy layup from the Falcons as the first two points are registered. Now here's Jordan Clark, ball in hand on the perimeter for the Wildcats. He's going to pop this one over to Samad Hector, and Samad Hector over to Seth Dawson. Uses the screen from Hector, and now he's going to drive. Passing out, now he finds McNeil. McNeil heading out left against his defender. Now he's going to drive, shoots this one out over, and it's going to find its way to Maverick Sanders. Sanders on the perimeter, shoots this into Samad Hector. Hector now driving, he's going to get that up, and that's not going to land. So a bit rough off the fingers, and it'll be the Falcons with the chance to push their lead up. Wildcats going to have to lock in on defense right now, make a physical force right here to keep the game close. And now driving out around the left side, working against the Wildcats here on the perimeter. Of course, they got that easy layup the last time around, so we'll have to watch the slashing. Here's a toss to the inside, and there it is right there. And it's going to be a foul called, this one supposedly against Maverick Sanders, if I am seeing correctly. It looks like that will be against Sanders, yes. A little bit too aggressive there on the post play, and if anything, they might have been a bit lucky with the foul call, because if he got that shot off clean, I believe Hector was going to get called for a goaltending for just slamming the rim, so to the line goes number 24, Shaw Anderson, the key player, as he misses the first one. And Shaw Anderson, I mean, Michael talk, talked about it in the pregame to this matchup. He's going to be a big factor whichever way he does end up playing. So the second free throw is going to land. That pushes the lead up to three, and there's three points scored on the game so far. Now bringing it up will be Jordan Clark. He heads out right, and he's going to meet up with Seth Dawson. Dawson now shoots out to McNeil. McNeil at the top of the key gives it to Hector. Hector now over to Dawson. That's the easiest layup he's going to get all night, but he doesn't connect on it. It's given over to the Falcons, and now here they come. You need to hit those easy shots. Take advantage with what you are given right now for the Wildcats. And now moving the ball around a couple of times. This pass is going to be handed off. Top of the key, wide open three-pointer. And that one's not going to land because we can't be allowing those kinds of shots. As now Seth Dawson bringing it up the court. He's working against his man, and he gives it to Maverick Sanders. Sanders on the right side wing, trying to drive. He's going to instead pop back and give it to Seth Dawson. Dawson now going to drive against his man, finds his way to the interior, fouled, and he gets it to go. A That's chance to tie the game. That's a big play right there. We saw the Wildcats come up short on very easy shots so far tonight. So Dawson being able to work in, gets a tougher shot, but gets it to fall, draws the foul, and with a chance to make a three-point play, we will see if the Wildcats can tie it up here about two and a half minutes into the first game. And so Seth Dawson at the line as the arena goes silent. And he's not going to be able to make the shot. And it's going to be Samad Hector saving it inside, trying to throw it off the foot of an of a defender and get it out of bounds. But it will go straight into the hands of one of his opponents. So now working their way to the post are the Falcons. They're going to be met with a double team, and now the ball at the top of the key. Here's the three, and it lands. So a great shot, and the reaction afterwards definitely warranted, as here come the Wildcats trying to do something here as they're now finding themselves down by four. Here's Samad Hector driving against his man. To the inside, he gets it to go. Big play right there. It's going to be tough to match twos and threes against this team, but any points on the board are big for the Wildcats. And now driving their way across half court. This one's handed off, and it'll find its way to Shaw Anderson. Anderson kicks this one out left, and there's an easy opportunity on the inside. Got a little bit lost there on the defensive side where the Wildcats and the Falcons were able to take advantage. Now Dawson out to Hector. Hector, of course, scoring on the last drive. Stops around the perimeter. Now he's going to give it over to Cameron McNeil. McNeil and Hector, the two leading scorers from last year. Here's McNeil now driving his way in. Trying to complete something. He gets the mid-range shot up, but that one's not going to find the rim before it's in the hands of the opposition. That was a tough look, especially with some time left on the shot clock. They could have found something a bit better on that end. And now the primary point guard for SPU is going to be picked off as Samad Hector gets the steal. A great opportunity there as he gives the Wildcats a chance to put some points on the board. Seth Dawson shoots out right to McNeil. McNeil out right to Sanders. Pulls the three. Won't be able to hit. Off the back iron that's rebounded by the Falcons. Very quick shot right there, especially from deep. You want to see them possibly working around a bit more, but you're not going to get much more open than that. So, unfortunately, just did not fall. And so now maneuvering their way around the perimeter once more, trying to find an easy opportunity. This one's going to find its way into the hands of Shaw Anderson. Anderson working against Maverick Sanders. Now the ball is tossed in for Samad Hector to work with. Out to the exterior and stepping out of bounds is Shaw Anderson. So not able to place his feet where he may have wanted, and that's going to cost them the possession. And it looks like there'll be some subs, but first a timeout taken on the court, I believe, by the Falcons. So about 15.50 left to go here in the first half. The Wildcats down 4-8. to eight. 
and quite the matchup already as we've definitely started to see some positives and some negatives come out on both ends. Well, it'll be quite interesting to see how Central Washington is able to adjust coming out of this timeout. Yeah, I will... I think right now the Wildcats just really need to get the ball moving on offense. Their defense has been holding up, not exactly shutting them down, but definitely limiting the easy shots, making them work for every point they can. So if they can try and turn that into points on the other end, either the turnovers, the rebounds, everything we talked about in the pregame as a statistical advantage, they need to put points on the board to keep up because it's a four-point game right now, but you never know how close you're going to get and how many chances you're going to have to try and take the lead. And that is exactly right, Michael. Another big big key to this game that we've already seen multiple times throughout the game is the impact of Maui Sizi. I mean, he's been great wearing number 10 for the Falcons. He is their primary ball handler, and he's really been able to carve up the Wildcats in any way he seems fit up until this point. So coming out of the timeout, we'll see if they're able to adjust and maybe get some more pressure on him from the one spot. Yep, and it looks like coming into the game for the Wildcats right now is Colby Jeanette, a familiar name and familiar face for this Wildcats team. Coming off the bench, they're hoping that he can put in some big minutes right now and work with the Wildcats on both sides of the court. Of course, Jeanette, we mentioned earlier, is just such a good, he's such a good catch-and-shoot shooter, and he takes opposing teams off guard as, you know, as you look at his height, you'd assume that he's just going to play as a traditional big, but that doesn't doesn't always end up being the case. As here's Jordan Clark handing it over to Seth Dawson. Dawson now attacking. He moves his way up. Shoots this one out right to Cameron McNeil. Cameron McNeil with the ball. Now he's going to attempt the drive. Take a step back. Take the mid-range shot. Gets it to go. Big shot right there. McNeil's going to have to step up. The senior is going to have the biggest shots of the game for the Wildcats. And that was just a great opportunity there. Making something out of nothing as the Falcons pass this one around. Driving for the painted area now. And it's Shaw Anderson. Ball on the exterior. A great three-point shot, and that one was green from the exterior. He knocked that down with a hand in his face from Samad Hector and put the Falcons up five. So Seth Dawson now. Wildcats needing some sort of morale boost as now Samad Hector will drive. Searching for some scoring opportunity, he gets it. There we go. You saw right there, he was aggressive and he knew he wanted to score that possession and he put points back on the board for the Wildcats. He's got four tonight. So now Jordan Clark attempting to shut down the ball handler here as it's kicked over to Shaw Anderson. Anderson now ball in hand, working against Samad Hector. He's got two of the better defenders on the team on him, but a wide open three-point opportunity is going to come from it. Nothing's going to fall, and it'll be Seth Dawson with the ball in hand. He's got Hector out right, McNeil out left. Chooses McNeil, and here he comes. McNeil out to Hector. Three! Won't be able to get it to go. Samad Hector does have the highest three-point percentage on this Wildcats team, while also leading in rebounds and points. So he definitely is a big factor to this game's winning or losing as he picks up another board there on the Anderson miss three. Now Jordan Clark with the ball in hand. He kicks it out to Seth Dawson. Dawson driving, trying to carve up the defense. He won't, but he will get the foul. Yet again, we see Seth Dawson taking the ball in his hands, driving inside, not able to get the shot to fall, but draws a foul, and he'll go to the line to try and cut a bit more into this Falcons lead, as we'll have some subs coming in for the Wildcats in just a moment. So an opportunity to cut the lead down to only one. Coming into the game are going to be Angelo Lloyd, as well as Bradley Swilly and Kim and. Uh, Number one guard, that's of course being Wildcat guard. Kevin Holden. And Looks so like Holden's we'll... going to have to wait and see if Dawson hits the free throw before he can check in, though. And we'll see how they're able to do. This shot is going to go. And the only player staying on the court from the previous lineup will be Colby Jeanette and Samad Hector. A new three around them. And so here are the Falcons bringing it up. A different ball handler now as this one's going to be kicked back and the play is quickly called. Here comes SPU moving out right and a foul is called against SPU. For... Now, that, now that right there appeared to be a pro wrestling move it seemed as th that was number 20 for the Falcons. Theo McMillan comes and takes the handoff and just levels the Wildcat defender right there in front of a ref. That's going to be a charge and a legal screen every time Wildcats have a chance to take the lead now. And now here we are as the Wildcats moving the ball around. Holton started it off, giving it over to Jeanette. Now he's going to return the favor once again. Jeanette now back out Holden. Holden takes the step back and a foul is called. 
And it looks like that'll be against the Falcons as Holden was trying to drive and make something happen. And number four, Jonas Latour of the Falcons with a bit too much hands on the defender. And it'll be the fourth out for the Falcons. And that's quite the high total for what we've seen so far in terms of game time. Not even seven minutes into this contest as Angelo Lloyd attempts the three-pointer and it's off. Rebounded now by the Falcons as they bring it up. Now coming straight down the middle and a foul is going to be called before the shot is put up. As it looks like Latour was about to get an easy land, but was slowed down on the foul by Lloyd. And it looks like Slot Hecker will be slipping out of the game for number 44, Mitch Breezy. Breezy so far on the year. We mentioned him a little bit in the pregame as he's been great in terms of securing rebounds and blocks on the interior for the Cats. Now here's Seattle Pacific. Trying to work against him. Angelo Lloyd playing some great defense here. Sticking with his man. Just one shot back out to the exterior. Here's Anderson in front of Brizzy. And wow, Anderson has now hit threes in the face of not only Mitch Brizzy, but also Samad Hector, the two best defenders on this team. Has now Brizzy with the ball in hand. Working around the perimeter, he hands this off to Jeanette. Jeanette now over, and here's Angelo Lloyd. Takes the step back. Wants the three. Isn't going to take it. He's going to drive instead, and he's going to solidify not a whole lot on that drive. And that's going to be Falcon basketball. I think the big key for the Wildcats right now is slowing down Shaw Anderson. We talked pregame. Anderson's going to have a big game. That's just a given. He's already had seven points in the first seven minutes. They need to find a way to shut him down more from the perimeter. They really do. I mean, two three-pointers for him so far tonight. And that's another great example of how this Wildcat team is able to force mistakes from their opposition. We talked about getting in your opponent's head, and we talked about doing what you can to misconstrue what they're trying to throw at you on the court. And that's all working here as another foul is picked up, and they now sit at five. And Jayla Lloyd, ball in hand, working against SPU. He hands it off to Holden, and now Holden shoots out to Swilly. Swilly over to Brizzy. Brizzy had the wide open lane, but didn't capitalize on it soon enough. Now he's going to drive, put the shot up, and it's off. No foul is called, and here come the Falcons. Now around half court, working against Angelo Lloyd. Moving out right. He's got men coming up from practically every angle. He passes it out. Now this one wanting Anderson. He's going to get it to him. Anderson's going to hand it off. Now moving down the left side. And it's back over to Anderson once more. Anderson now moving out. Takes a mid-range shot. Gets wide open for that one, but he can't secure the payload. And it's going to be Angelo Lloyd bringing in the rebound. Now driving, tossing out. Colby Jeanette not going to take the opportunity for the open shot. Instead, he's going to take a shot at the rim, which won't fall. But Bradley Swilly will attempt a three also with the same result. Now Mitch Brizzy going to get the rebound and shoot this over to Angelo Lloyd. Angelo Lloyd going to drive, and he'll get the rebound. And he'll get the layup to go, cutting the lead down to two. A little Jelly from Jello right there on the inside to cut the lead too. That's what you like to see as SPU crosses the half court logo. And this one tossed over. Here's Anderson working against Brizzy once more. Anderson has definitely showed himself to be a far more physical player than Brizzy, pushing him back with practically every drive that they meet each other. And Folks, they take a timeout on the court. We're going to take one, too. Be back in just about a minute here on 88 One The Berg, your music central as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. at us too she wanted to throw it here right and in five four three two one and <laughs> won the Berg, your music central as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Folks, we rejoin the action as your Central Washington Wildcats lead it 12 to 14, or trail it 12 to 14 here early in this matchup. Folks, we are not even to what would be considered the second quarter as about a minute and 25 separates what would have been the first and second quarters. Now, folks, as we come out of this timeout, your Wildcats are definitely fighting for momentum with Seattle Pacific here as neither team has been able to break out very eerily similar to the beginning of this women's game that we saw earlier tonight. I would say right now it has been a very 
physical match between these two teams. We've seen them try and fight down low. Eight total fouls between the two teams. As right before that timeout, there was a foul by Brizzy on Shaw Anderson. So it'll be the Falcons inbounding the ball coming out of the timeout right now, looking to extend their lead while the Wildcats are trying to slow them down. And so we'll see what they do. They toss it straight into Anderson, and he's going to kick out to the perimeter. And now this one's going to be tossed back over, and here's Sizzy. Sizzy now he's going to make the pass back to Anderson. Anderson back to Sizzy. Now Sizzy has been so great so far today, but just rejoining the game. A three-pointer is attempted by his teammate, but no dice. Now Kevin Holden bringing the ball up for the Cats. Now he's going out right, using the dribble moves. Here's Mitch Brizzy with it. He uh, looked like he was going to hand it off to Angelo Lloyd. Instead, taking a second and just passing it to him. A good job of keeping it moving for Angelo Lloyd, though. And a foul is called. That play almost turned disastrous as Lloyd lost his footing a bit. Was able to maintain not just his balance, but his dribble. And then draw a foul when the SP was trying to jump on the ball. This one committed by Owen Mariarty of the Falcons. And there's no better way of... <laughs> Sorry, folks. There's no better way of uh, getting yourself back in the game than what we're seeing here, as that's going to be a quick shot put up and knocked down by Bradley Swilly. Now here come the Falcons once more. Maui Sizzy, of course, the primary ball handler, bringing it up, trying to post up from the logo. He's working against Swilly here, and he's going to lose it out of bounds. Though yeah. the referee's going to stay put with the correct opinion, that being that Central touched it last. Right there. You don't get a much better angle in seeing how the ball goes out than the ref was right there in front of it. So it'll be SPU ball inbounding underneath their own basket. It'll be Maui Sizzy, the inbounder. Interesting how much he's touching the ball here when it needs to be moved. He's going to toss his one out to the perimeter. And now driving with the ball, putting up the mid-range shot and knocking it down. This one, Kyle Littman of the Falcons. So that's going to break the tie, give SPU a two-point advantage. As now on the other end, it's Angelo Lloyd tossing this one around a couple of times before Mitch Brizzy gives it over to Angelo Lloyd, who's not going to be able to get the shot to go in the interior. Now tossed around a couple of times by the Falcons. Here's the post opportunity, but Maverick Sanders is there to shut it down. Great post defense right there by Sanders as the Wildcats turn it the other way. And Angelo Lloyd receives the pass, gets it to go. Some of the easier points you're going to see here tonight, and he cuts that lead down to zero. These teams now tied at 16. That's how the Wildcats can capitalize on turnovers and big defensive plays to push it down the court quickly. Now Maui Sizzy tossing this one back out a couple of times, and it's going to find its way onto the interior with Anderson. There's no way he's missing that. Great ball movement by the Falcons right there. They're able to move it around, get the defense caught up on the inside, and Anderson had great positioning to finish. Now Kevin Holden tossing this one out to Swilly. Swilly's going to move out right and give it to Sanders. Sanders is going to toss it to Swilly, and Swilly's going to give it, or excuse me, Lloyd is going to give it to Brizzy. Brizzy now out to Swilly. Swilly shoots the three, and he's fouled, so that's going to be three shots or two, depending on where they saw his feet at. It looks like it'll be a two-point as he looks like... They're Actually, the he's in the bonus now. They're, they are in the bonus, but that was still a shooting foul. So he'll shoot free throws regardless. It looks like that will be committed by Kyle Littonen of the Falcons, his second foul, and it'll send Swilly to the line shooting too. And this could be huge here as the Wildcats now have the next nine minutes of game time to be in the bonus. They are still four fouls away from putting themselves in similar danger. So a chance here to really capitalize if they can nail their charity shots. And here's Swilly for his second. He'll nail it. So miss the first, hit the second for the 90% free throw shooter, and the lead is cut down to one, 17-18. And here's Maui Sizzy moving it up for the Falcons, returning player from last year. And he's working against Kevin Holden, a new Wildcat. Fresh face, he's not yet seen as he tosses this one down into the post. Brizzy is going to be able to bring the type of defense that we need there as now the Wildcats bring it down. Here's Bradley Swilly taking the step back, using Brizzy's screen and shooting it over to Lloyd. Lloyd now moving himself out right, using the dribble moves to his advantage, now losing the ball, but Kevin Holden is there to pick it back up. Plays being called by the coach, but the signs aren't being picked up, and here's Kevin Holden kicking out to Swilly. Swilly for three! Unable to knock that down. Here's Mitch Brizzy with the offensive rebound, though, and the second chance opportunity now for the Wildcats as it's tossed up to Lloyd. 
Lloyd now working against his defender. He takes the step back three, and he gets it to go! A huge shot right there by Lloyd, being able to drive in. Looks like he was trying to draw a foul with the contact. Decides, I'll take the three instead. Oh, yeah, you love to see that. As now Shaw Anderson with the ball in hand. And this one should be out of bounds. The referee is part of the playing field, ladies and gentlemen. If he's out of bounds and it touches him, it is an out-of-bounds basketball. You see that sometimes in all of the basketball where the referee gets a little bit too involved with the play when he's just trying to avoid anything. And the Wildcats use that to their advantage and get the ball back. As now Cabin Holden, ball in hand, giving it up, well, the Wildcats a really good chance here. Bradley Swilly's going to receive it, and he's going to drive. Stops for a second. He kicks back out to Lloyd. Lloyd takes the step to his right, takes the three. And no opportunity there for back-to-back -back bangs off of the, uh, the old call. And now here is Maui Sizzy once again as the Falcons look to even this game back up. Tosses over to Anderson. Anderson has been lethal from beyond the arc or really shooting deep anywhere. He backs himself up to Sanders as he nails the shot. Just getting probably about an inch or two more than Sanders on that jump. As now Kevin Holden's going to toss over to Brizzy. Brizzy's going to hand it right back to him. Holden's going to drive himself in. Give it over to Swilly. Swilly will drive, put up the shot, and it's not going to go. So now Maui Sizzy brings the rebound in. And here come the Falcons as he's going to be working against Swilly on the other end. Here he comes. He hands this one off. Now coming up and around at the top of the key. They move it out a couple more times. Interesting haircuts on this team as here comes Anderson. Anderson working himself in against Sanders once more. Puts up the shot and won't get it to go. Brizzy is going to toss it over to Sanders for the easy rebound. And now Sanders kicks over to Lloyd. Foul is called. And just like that, the eighth foul of the half has been committed by the Falcons. This one will be go against Moriarty of the Falcons, his second foul, and a timeout will be taken, and coming out of the timeout, Lloyd will be at the line. So just like that, ladies and gentlemen, they take a timeout, we'll take one too, and be back in about a 30 seconds here on 88 One The Bird, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. won the Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Folks, welcome back. I am Ryan Gildersleeve, your play-by-play -play broadcaster for all of tonight's action, alongside Michael Jones as we try to break down what's happening between these matchups with Central Washington University and their opposing Seattle Pacific Falcons. Folks, a bit of a show by the cheer squad on the court before both of these teams retake it. 20-20 to 20 your score as we are split straight down the middle, but we've got a few shots coming in J.L. Lloyd's way. Yep, it'll be a one and one for Lloyd as eight fouls committed now by the Falcons in the first half with about six and a half to go. So a lot of free throws can be coming your way for the Wildcats as Lloyd hopes to capitalize for that and give the Wildcats a lead. And so now we await the first free throw, which he gets. So the second of the one and one now moving his way. Lloyd, a 95% free throw shooter on the season, so he has definitely been at the line a lot for this Wildcats team. And we'll see what he's able to do. 95%, meaning he misses one in about every 20. And once you know, going into the game, he had shot 20 free throws and missed one. Really? Isn't that something? So, there we go. His free throw percentage will be a little bit increased after those two makes. Yeah, just a tad. Made about 21 on the season now. All right, so here we are. The Falcons bringing the ball up, trying to put something on the board against the Cats here, working against Seth Dawson, and uh, we, uh, we've got a call against the Cats here. Yeah, it looks like it'll be against Dawson. A little bit too much contact on the drive, so his first foul, the fourth for the Wildcats. No bonus yet, though, so the Falcons will inbound it underneath their own basket. Six and a half minutes remaining in this first half of action as the three-pointer is put up directly following the inbound. 
And it's not going to go as Seth Dawson brings it up for the Cats. Moving out right. He's got Samad Hector. He finds him. Shot is not going to make its way up as Samad is cleanly blocked. That was great timing right there by Hector because when he first got it and gathered, there were about three Falcons flying all around him. And even when he tried to put it up, a little bit too much defense, but the Wildcats will keep possession. And so Jordan Clark, the inbounder, he tosses it into Seth Dawson. Dawson now has the double team coming, so he kicks it out to McNeil. Now this one's swatted out of bounds, and the Wildcats will bring possession of the basketball. I'll say, speaking of Falcons, I just said they were flying. They have big wingspans as well as they were able to get their hands on these very quick passes by the Wildcats. And so the inbound comes in to Cameron McNeil, who has the mid-range shot, and that's really where he loves to work is on that corner. He bangs that home. Four points for McNeil now on the night and a four-point lead. Here come the Falcons, moving it around the perimeter here. And this one's going to be stolen by Cameron McNeil. Cameron McNeil on the break now. Here he comes. Not going to be able to get it to go, but the foul will come. So nine fouls on the half for Seattle Pacific. Yep, and this one will be a shooting foul, so two free throws. And any future fouls will also lead to two free throws for the Wildcats. Uh, this foul will be called against Jaden Penninger, his second foul for the Falcons as a timeout is taken. And folks, as they take a timeout, we'll take one too and be back in just about 30 seconds here on 88 Won the Berg, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. On the Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I am your play-by-play -play broadcaster, Ryan Gildersleeve, joined by Michael Jones for all of tonight's action, as we've got Cameron McNeil shooting free throws here, ladies and gentlemen. 24 to 20 your scores. That's now extended to 25 20. Nick Neal, a 73% free throw shooter on the season. Not one of the best in the Wildcats, but anything above 50 is better than average. Yeah, I mean, you can't really argue with that, as the numbers don't lie. McNeil's going to nail both of the charity shots, and that yeah. extends the Wildcat right. lead to numbers six. Numbers don't lie, ball don't lie, and the Wildcats now up six. And so here they come, moving it over to Shaw Anderson. Still on the perimeter here. Working his way around a little bit. He hands this off to his guard, and he's going to lose that out of bound quickly, but save it. And now they continue to swing the rock around the exterior and drive. Here's the shot, and that's about as easy as it's going to get if you're a guard with looking for the hop step. So now Seth Dawson going to be the primary guard, bringing this ball up for the Wildcats. He shoots this one out right to Jordan Clark, and Clark's going to give it out left to McNeil. McNeil now to Hector. Hector is all but alone here. And he's going to drive in against Shaw Anderson. We'll see how the defense compares as Samad's going to get the shot up and in. Big shot right there by the Wildcats as you want to try and keep pace with the Falcons right now. Don't need to extend the lead, but maintain it. And so here are those Falcons trying to see if they can cut it down a tad bit. Six points where it currently stands. Anderson with the ball in hands. That's a mid-range shot that he's not going to make. Instead, it's going to be rebounded by Cameron McNeil, who will have the ball in his hands coming down with the fast break. They're going to dissolve that right back into their normal offense. Here's Seth Dawson moving out right. He's going to toss it to Clark. Clark now to McNeil. McNeil's going to drive, and he's going to lose it out of his hands as he goes for the layup. Now it's moving it around are the Falcons and a very odd shot. It's not going to find the rim, and if it did, I'd have been quite surprised as now the Wildcats with possession. Smod Hector driving against Ann. He's going to kick up for a second. Now kick it out to Maverick Sanders for three. He gets it! Big three right there by Sanders. Not the guy taking as many three-pointers as the others on the team, but he's shown the ability to hit them. And right there, the Wildcats now have a lead of nine. That they do. Only one off from their first double-digit separation of the night. 
And we'll see what Shaw Anderson and the Falcons are able to do as he drives against Samad Hector and misses. So Samad bringing the defensive pressure that we needed, and a foul will be called the tenth of the quarter so far of the half, excuse me, by Seattle Pacific. This one will go against Shaw Anderson, his first, and a timeout is taken and just by like, the Wildcats. And just like that, folks, as they take a timeout, we'll take one too and be back in just about 30 seconds here on 88 on the Berg, your Music Central as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. That's Cameron McNeil. They use that every game. All right, we're back in three, two, one. 88 won the Berg, your music central. Ladies and gentlemen, how are we doing? We are back here in the Nicholson Arena. And if you ask me, we're doing quite well. 31 to 22, your scores. The Wildcats lead it by nine coming out of the break. It is quite to the day for basketball here in Ellensburg as just kind of like the opposite of what we saw this past Thursday. Yes, and right now everybody in the pavilion has been treated to a very competitive set of basketball games with the women's team coming away with a victory over Seattle Pacific 71-61 earlier and the men's team currently clinging to a very similar lead here with about four minutes to go in the first half, 31-22. And so as we come out of the break, one big key storyline in this game, truly, is that Central Washington only having committed four fouls in the half so far to 10 by the Falcons. We'll see the results of one of said fouls right now as Maverick Sanders attempts it. And he's going to miss the first. Sanders has been a solid free throw shooter so far this season, 73%. Actually, correction, 43%, so a little bit below average. And he will miss both of them. Samad Hector, though, gets the rebound, and the second-chance points aren't there. So the Falcons take over as the Wildcats unable to get it to go. Now driving is Maui Sizi. He's going to pop this one to his left. Now working on towards the interior. And there's a foul, the 11th of the game, called against Seattle Pacific. This won't lead to any free throws because it was an offensive foul, but a great charge taken by Hector waiting as Ander he's had the entire game. Anderson has backed him down, backed him down. Hector decides to time it perfectly, take the charge, and get the ball going the other way. Yeah, telling him, put that one back in the bag of tricks as the Wildcats regain possession. Clark handing off to Seth Dawson. Dawson tosses it to McNeil and McNeil to Hector. Hector goes up and over to Seth Dawson. Wide. Excuse me, not a wide open shot as he's mobbed by Very three Falcons at the end of that. And now Samad Hector working against the guard here on the exterior. This one swung around to Sizzy. Sizzy now back to the man who passed to him. Working against Samad Hector, he drives. Samad gets up, unable to get a hand on the ball, and now second chance opportunity for the Falcons. They get it. Not a lot of movement from Samad at all during that, so interesting interior D as now it is tossed over to Samad, and he'll get it going here as he tosses to Jordan Clark. Clark working out right, still sitting at the top of the key, uses the screen from Hector, shoots out to Sanders. Sanders now changes directions, shoots it to McNeil for three. Bang! Huge shot right there by McNeil. He's only been really sticking to the mid-range so far tonight, but decides to bring it a bit further out and hits a huge shot. And just like that, the Wildcats clinch the first 10-point separation of the game, leading 34-24. to Here they come against Samad Hector in the post. This one's stolen by Seth Dawson. And Dawson's going to keep it in his hands through a tough set there. And another foul, the 12th of the period, has been called against Seattle Pacific. Ladies and gentlemen, if you recall us talking about getting in your opponent's head, there's no better way to do that than to commit three times less fouls than them. And Moriarty, number one for the Falcons, at his third foul of the game. So I believe he'll be getting to the bench for a little bit to sit off this foul trouble. And so now Seth Dawson will shoot free throws as the first one is unable to find its home in the in the net. As it looks like Joe Lloyd will sub in for Jordan Clark for the Wildcats, and Moriarty will sub out, and in comes Jane Penninger for the Falcons. 
So it appears that the Wildcats leaning a bit towards the offensive side of the game for this final two minutes as Seth Dawson will nail the second free throw. I'll say in practice every day, teams like the Wildcats practice this two-minute drill and how well you can take advantage going into the half. So now Maui Sizzy is going to toss this one over and we're ready to go. Coach is throwing up directions as out to the right go the Falcons and here's the three-point shot and they're going to drain that. Now when Kyle Litton, and he's been looking for that shot all game and he hits it right there. And so now on the other end, the Wildcats looking aggressive as the ball is shot out to Samad Hector. Hector now over to Dawson. Dawson to Sanders. And there's going to be a call against Central Washington here. Looks if it like is. a travel on Dawson, I believe, as he was a little bit too all over the place when he first got that. Not sure if he wanted to shoot, not sure if he wanted to pass. Decides to instead travel as he was passing it, and it'll be the Falcons ball going the other way. And so now it's Maui Sizzy once again in control of the ball. He's going to toss it up to Anderson, who returns the favor. Sizzy working against Maverick Sanders. He's not going to pass it yet. And joining to still hold the ball in his hands as he attempts the toss for Anderson on the interior. But Samad Hector doing a good job of keeping him away from the rack. I'll say it's a battle of 24. It's Hector and Anderson. This has been a very big mirror match between the two and how well they've matched up on both sides of the court. So now Kevin Holden with the ball in hand. He drives out right and hands it over to Lloyd. Lloyd now to McNeil and McNeil to Sanders. Sanders won't take the three. Instead kicks out to Samad Hector. Hector now to Lloyd. Lloyd driving. Puts up the mid-range. That one not online and it's going to go to the Falcons. SPU now bringing it up the court. This one's tossed up and... There's going to be a foul called on practically no contact. I'm not exactly sure what that was. It looks, I, it looks like the, prim, the primary hand, the one going up for the block, didn't catch much. But a little bit of the offhand gave a shove to Lutton. And as he was going up for it, uh, correction, Penninger for the Falcons. So he'll go to the line. And that foul was called on Holden of the Wildcats. So they're posed with an opportunity to cut the lead down to six as they hit the first shot. Say about a minute to go, you can expect to see two, three more possessions depending on how quick they want to work with it. So now every shot counts as we enter into the second half. And the second shot will go. So just like that, they cut the lead down to six, and it's now Kevin Holden's job to orchestrate this drive. Central looking to keep that lead flourishing as they head into halftime. Here's Cameron McNeil on the reception now. He takes the mid-range and he won't be able to hit. Off the back iron, that's rebounded by Sizzy. And here he comes. He's going to toss up to Anderson. Anderson the stop and shoot three-pointer and he gets it to go. The Falcons knew they had numbers coming back and Anderson found his spot and knocked that one down. So now it's Maverick Sanders on the other side with the ball for the Wildcats. You'd have to imagine that this team of shooters is looking to even out what we saw in this last drive, but who really knows? Unfortunately, no. there is a 10-second difference between the shot and game clock, so the Falcons know they're going to get at least one more shot, and the Wildcats are right and drain the clock down. So now here's Cameron McNeil. He shoots out left to Kevin Holden. Holden drives, shoots to the corner. Maverick Sanders, open three, won't be able to hit. Mitch Brizzy knocks it out of bounds, and there will be 9.2 on the clock remaining in this first half of action. I have to assume that the Falcons are going to look to try and get the ball into Anderson's hands to tie it up going into the half. And it looks like the Wildcats know that too as they sub Swilly in for Cameron McNeil for this last possession. 9.2 seconds and it appears that we're going to have to wait a little bit longer. So they take a timeout on the court. We'll take one too and be back in just about 30 seconds here on 88 One The Bird, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. what I try to do, but then it's like, where am I going to go, Jack in the Box? All right, and then three, two, one. One. Hey. 88 won the Berg, your music central. Folks, welcome back. Also, the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. I am Ryan Gildersleeve, your play-by-play -play broadcaster for all of tonight's action, joined by Michael Jones as we try to see what will happen in this final 9.2 seconds of action between the Wildcats and the Falcons in this first half. 
Maui Sizzy, the ball handler for the Falcons as he drives against Bradley Swilly. He's going to miss the layup. Cabin Holden will get the rebound, and he's going to get a shot up, but not until far after the buzzer sounds. So even if it was made, it wouldn't have mattered. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, 35-32, to 32, your score as Central Washington leads it by three heading into half. Folks, we'll be back in just a moment as we provide a halftime analysis of what we saw in the first half and what can we expect in the second. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in just a moment here on 88.1 The Bird, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream.
Ten seconds. <coughs> and in five, four, three, two, one. one. 88 won the Berg, your music central as well as the Central Washington Athletics live stream. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the action. I am Ryan Gildersleeve, your play-by-play -play broadcaster for tonight's action, alongside Michael Jones as we witness some great Central Washington basketball today. Michael, we witnessed a game where Central Washington's Lady Cats won by a score of 10, 71 to 61, your final there, and that was a good one. Got us back on track, got us where we needed to be. Now, we're in the midst of a game between our men's squad and Seattle Pacific, of course, and it's 35 to 32 at half, which only lead by three. But if you are just going off of the eye test, you would assume that we're leading by closer to five or eight points. This team has been playing great tonight, and one thing that we've talked about since the very beginning of our broadcast has been Central Washington's ability to get into their opponents in head and how that can shift things. Folks, in the first half of action, we witnessed 12 fouls come by the Seattle Pacific Falcons. And if that's not getting into your opponent's head, I don't know what is. Every little movement they seem to be making is something wrong. And that's the way that you want your opponent to be thinking. You want them to be thinking that if, if they're going to attempt something against Samad Hector, it's going to get blocked. If they're going to attempt a dribble move when they've got Cameron McNeil in front of them, it's going to be stolen. If they're going to be back a step against Maverick Sanders, that three-pointer is going to land. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what Central Washington has done so good tonight. They have put themselves in opportunities to not only do what they're expected to do, but to consistently be operating at a high and efficient level. Folks, tonight we've seen Central Washington play a great game, especially as you compare it to what we've witnessed so far, not only throughout this season, but throughout this week. Central Washington had an issue keeping the ball in their hands when it came to their matchup against the Montana State Billings Yellow Jackets just this last Thursday. But today, turnovers have been none of the problem for Central Washington, and in fact, I would say that the only issue really has been that we haven't played enough basketball. That's really all that sits in my head right now as I witness this game between our Central Washington Wildcats and Seattle Pacific Falcons. But really, if we come out of this halftime and we're firing on the same cylinders that we were when we left things off, this game is already decided, Michael. Yep, and I think right now the big numbers to look at are, like you said, the fouls, the turnovers and everything. It is the mistakes that the Falcons have been making and how well the Wildcats Cats have capitalized on them. 12 fouls and 9 turnovers for the Falcons versus just 5 fouls and 1 turnover for the Wildcats. I think right now, the biggest difference isn't necessarily the mistakes, it's the fact that even with that, the Wildcats are only up 3. That's because they've been shooting 35% from the field, 30% from 3, so they've been hitting their deep shots, but Seattle Pacific, especially Shaw Anderson, their star player so far, has been shooting 46% from the field, 40 35% from three. They, one of two things is going to happen. Either the Falcons are going to start fixing their mistakes and really take hold of this game, or the Wildcats are going to hit their shots and take hold of this game. Because if everything holds, this is going to be a really tough one, but you have to imagine coming out of the half, one of these two teams is going to fix the problem they've been having in the first half and hopefully turn things around and really take control here as we get into the final 20 minutes of play. And you know, I really do think that like you said, consistency is going to be the biggest part of this second half. Whichever team is able to consistently do what they have shown they are able to is going to win this matchup. Now, Seattle Pacific, of course, I think that they've been driven by one factor and one factor in specific. Not what you want to hear if you're having your own team's success described, but the fact of the matter is there has been one man that has done everything for them tonight, and that is Shaw Anderson. He's been shooting shots from wherever he wants, and when he puts them up, you better bet that they are going to fall down, and it's going to happen right in the middle of that rim. Folks, tonight, Shaw Anderson, he's been great for them. Their leading score, 14 points on the game so far. And when we come out of halftime, one of the biggest points for your Wildcats is going to be seeing how they're able to shut down the post. If Shaw Anderson is not able to score, then I don't think the Seattle Pacific team is able to breathe. I think the big thing is necessarily not shutting down the post, but it is just shutting him down because he's actually been doing not much damage in the post. Only two for six inside the arc, but three for four. 
score from beyond. He's been knocking down those open shots, and he's been hitting them with defenders in his face. The Wildcats have to do something different to try and guard him on the outside, make him either have tougher shots or not even want to shoot. So coming into the half as the players start taking the court, it'll be interesting to see how the Wildcats were able to do that as well as they were up 11, 35-24. The Falcons ended on an 8-0 run in the first half. Who is going to have that momentum starting it off here? And, folks, there are 20 minutes loaded back up on the clock. We've got the second half of action ready to begin here on the Central Washington University Athletics live stream at 88 won the Berg. Folks, Ryan Gildersleeve and Michael Jones bringing you the action as Seattle Pacific University inbounds the basketball, and we are getting started. Shaw Anderson going to kick it out right to Maui Sizzy. Now he's going to drive, shoot this one out to the corner. And it's going to be tossed around, moved out the same way. Moving towards the top of the key. Now they're going to hit the switch back and drive. Here's a mid-range shot, and they get to fall. So the momentum definitely still in the pocket of Seattle Pacific if you're going off of that first drive. Jordan Clark bringing the ball up now, sitting around that big old logo at the midcourt of Nicholson Arena. He's going to toss this one up to Samad Hector. Now over to Maverick Sanders. Sanders driving, puts up the mid-range shot, and he gets it to go. Big shot right there by Sanders. He's got five on the night now, and the Wildcats put up their first First points about five minutes. And so Shaw Anderson brings it up. 45 seconds into the second half of action. He's going to toss. Now Anderson given another look with the ball in hand. He takes the step back, and they're trying to feed it to him. Now working on the post. The ball is taken away, and it's Maverick Sanders with the ball in hand. Gives it to Cameron McNeil, who's going to get that layup to go. Big play right there. We so we talked about it. They need to turn those turnovers into points efficiently, and right there, they push the ball out quickly, and within two seconds, they get points on the board. And here's Maui Sizzy bringing it up and working against Jordan Clark. Now the ball is handed off, and here's a three-point shot from Seattle Pacific University. They're unable to hit, and it's Cameron McNeil with the ball in hand, coming back down the court. McNeil now takes the step over, shoots it to Clark. Clark now to Dawson. Dawson moving forward. Takes the step back and shoots it to Sanders. Sanders now has Clark to his left, won't give it to him. Shoots the shot himself, can't connect. Set Sizzy with the ball now. Not a pretty look right there for the Wildcats, but they were able to at least slow it down and work themselves on offense as the Falcons now look to do the same. Jordan Clark with very up-close, tight defense against Sizzy here, but the pass is going to go past him. Now they're working towards the post. Samad Hector providing the defense there. First shot won't go. Second shot won't go. Third shot won't go. And Samad Hector's got the rebound. It looks like Hector blocked the shot, almost blocked it into the own hoop. But thankfully, they get the ball going the other way. And now Jordan Clark, ball in hand, shoots it to Sanders. Sanders now over to Dawson. Dawson to the corner with Mc two. Samad for three, but that one is off. Samad Hector has been a great three-point shooter for the Wildcats this season, but unable to connect in both this game and our game on Thursday. Now working it up is Sizzy. Sizzy takes the long three off the back iron, and this one's going to be offensively rebounded. Now Anderson kicks it out left, and it's Sizzy working again. He'll toss this one forward. And now Samad Hector providing the post defense, but he's unable to get the hand up soon enough. And it'll be two points on the board for SPU. Now Dawson, ball in hand. Over to Samad Hector. They trail by three. Hector on the perimeter. He wants to give it to Dawson. He's not going to. Instead, cutting towards the post. Now backing his defender up. And he's going to hit the spin move, put the shot up, and he's unable to connect. But the offensive rebound, probably not long enough in his hands for it to count, as now SPU is going to throw it down on the other end. And yet again, another Falcon score as they have cut the lead down to one point here as the Wildcats have started to make a little bit of mistakes on the offensive side that they were forcing earlier in the game. Now Seth Dawson has the ball in hand. He works out right. He's got the Samad Hector screen to his advantage. But this ball is going to be called out of bounds as think, Maverick Sanders attempts to keep it inside. I think right now the Wildcats need to try and figure out what they want to do on offense because the last few possessions have all been one pass or no pass into a shot. They have not been moving the ball as well. And with those tougher looks that they are not setting up for themselves, they haven't been hitting. And now the Falcons have a chance to take the lead here in the second half. Now Maui Sizzy will bring it up, and he's going to lose it quickly. Just a little bit too much mustard on that one, as now here comes Seth Dawson. Dawson up now towards the perimeter. He's going to drive and attempt the same thing. I don't understand where that was coming from, but now on the other end, it'll once again be SBU. They toss it to the inside. Now they toss it to Anderson for three, but he's going to miss on that one, luckily. 
And it's Cameron McNeil with the ball in hand for the Cats. Wildcats should count themselves lucky that Anderson missed that shot that he's hit a bunch already this game. And now this one tossed to Colby Jeanette, and he's unable to get that to go, but he does pick up the foul, meaning that the first of the half has now been registered against SPU. Foul number 10, and it looks like he'll shoot two free throws, but first a timeout is taken by the Falcons. And just like that, we'll take one, too. We'll be back in just about 30 seconds here on 88.1 The Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. thing that could have happened there. And in five, four, three, two, oh. Oh, one, yep. 88 won the Berg, your Music Central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Folks, we have finally done it. We have been acknowledged. We have been gifted, and we have finally, I don't even know what other word to use. Ladies and gentlemen, during the halftime break, during the timeouts, during practically any break that they can come up with, there are a couple of games that they do where they're throwing things around, trying to get it to different people. Well, we had the boot finally just got one and so finally we received one of the Domino's cups and I got a couple of Snickers and a couple other candies sitting in my hand now so big thanks to everybody for allowing us to get that opportunity and, and just like that and while Ryan gets his gift we're going to talk about the basketball game going on right now yeah. as, the Wild, as the Wildcats hold a one point lead and Jeanette is at the line looking to extend it he does with the first free throw knocking it down he's got his first point of the night and the Wildcats now lead 40-38 waiting the second shot and here's Jeanette. The second one is up, and the second one is down. 41-38 to 38 your scores. The Cats hop ahead by three. And here is Maui Z with the ball in hand. My apologies for my pronunciation of his name throughout the rest of the game. As he heads out right, he's going to shoot this one back to Anderson. Anderson shoots it out left. Now working against the Cat defense is Anderson as he goes up against Samad Hector. No shot is attempted before he shoots it back to the perimeter. And now Samad's still the defensive man down low, and he's going to get the rebound. Big play right there by Hector on defense, shutting out Anderson and getting the board. And now here's McNeil. He's going to drive and lose it for another drive. We just recently saw that same thing as the ball security starts to dwindle for the Wildcats. This one has moved around the perimeter a couple of times before a foul is called on the inside on the shot. As that will be called on, I believe, number 22, Colby Jeanette on the inside. That will be his first foul, and it will send the Falcons number three, Jen Penninger, to the line looking for two. He's had most of the points for the Falcons here in the second half as he's been able to get to the inside, draw fouls and hit shots, and he's looking to add more for the Falcons. He knocks down the first. And so now we'll await the second free throw coming for him here tonight. He's got a chance to cut the lead down to one as we see some substitutions on the court. Kevin Holden and Bradley Swilly coming into the game in the places of Seth Dawson and Cameron McNeil. As we now await the second free throw, that one's going to land. So 41-40, your score. As we are just about five minutes into game time here in the second half, quite the interesting scenario. As about 10 minutes ago, we were about 20 seconds less into game time. Yeah. And it looks like a quick little break in the court as the ball rolled off too far away. And the refs wanted to make sure they got the ball inbounded before too much time ran off the clock as they bring up the ball now. As Kevin Holden is going to make his way out right with it. And now he's going to shoot out to Hector. Hector's going to drive and throw it down, but that's just theatrics as the whistle's blue. As that will be called against... I believe number four, Jonas Latour for the Falcons. His third foul, second for SPU, and the Wildcats will inbound the ball into the basket. And so it's Bradley Swilly with the ball in hand being called for the travel. And it will be Falcons going the other way. They are down one, 15 minutes almost exactly to go in the game. And so now Maui Z, the point guard for the Falcons, driving up, working against Bradley Swilly. 
This one tossed out left. It's Anderson with the ball here on the perimeter. He's going to hand this one off, and now driving, taking a step back in the three. He's not going to be able to connect, and Samad Hector reels in yet another rebound. Now this one tossed up to Colby Jeanette. Jeanette going to toss this one up to Angelo Lloyd. And now Lloyd takes the switch back, drives, puts up the shot, gets it to go. Big play right there. Lloyd, one of the leading scorers on the team, 11 points on the game. And if he can get the momentum going on offense, that could be a huge dividend for the Wildcats. And so now Z is once again faced with the scenario of trying to create some offense. He's going to make his way out left. He's matched up with Samad Hector. Now a wide-open three-point opportunity. Kevin Holden coming in too hot. Perimeter defense doesn't look great there, but they're granted a missed shot and a rebound. So here's Angelo Lloyd again. He's going to take the three and nail it. Step back three, celebrating to the crowd right there on that side of the court. 14 on the night for him now. That was just gnarly as now SPU looks to answer back. They're unable, and it's going to be Angelo Lloyd one more time bringing in the rebound. He's got the ball in his hands. He's going to kick it out to Samad Hector, so no heat check here. As Samad gets it, it almost throws it down. Let me tell you, Shaw Anderson would have been on a poster in my bedroom if Samad made that. What a play. And thankfully for Hector, even with a little bit of the missed rim rattle alert right there, he will draw the foul off of Anderson. Anderson's second of the game, and he'll go to the line looking to extend a little bit of a Wildcats run now as they currently hold a six-point lead. Yeah, they're definitely putting themselves in a better position to break out in these next few minutes or so as Samad Hector's going to miss his first free throw. Not what you like to see from a player who gets to the line so much. And I like how even with the free throws here in the pavilion it gets so quiet that I feel like you could hear our voices from the other side of the court, not even through the broadcast. Exactly. And it's, it's just one of those things where everybody gets so quiet it feels like you're watching a sport people don't want to watch. <laughs> it feels like we're at a golf course all of a sudden but exactly. Hector does put his ball in the cup right there for one more point as well as hold a 47-40 lead with the Falcons bringing it down the court. So now driving in and matched up against Angela Lloyd. This one's kicked out left and now it's going to be against Mitch Brizzy that this one is taken in. And shots not put up. It's Anderson getting the open three-point opportunity and there was very obviously something being drawn up there and they execute it to perfection, allowing their best shooter to put three more on the board. Now Cavan Holden has the ball in hand for the Cats. He drives, shoots this one to the corner, and Jayla Lloyd has it. He shoots it to Swilly, but Swilly's not going to get it before it's intercepted. Now at a wide-open three-point opportunity, and that's six back-to-back -back points as Central Washington is crumbling in terms of perimeter defense. Yeah, right there, we just talked about it. They went on a little bit of a run right there to extend the lead out to seven, and just in the last 30 seconds, big shots by the Falcons have cut the lead right back down to one as a timeout is obviously taken there by the Wildcats to try and compose themselves. And so 13 minutes will remain after the timeout. Folks, we'll take one too and be back in just about 30 seconds here on CWU Athletics live stream and 88 won the bird. your music central as well as the central washington university athletics live stream folks we are back as we witness the final 13 minutes of this game between your central washington wildcats and the seattle pacific university falcons folks up until this point in the night the falcons have really found their way to spontaneously score if there's going to be points put up on the board you are not going to expect it from the falcons as they have shown that their ability to put up quick quick three-pointers and really just any catch-and-shoot opportunity that they can get has led them to a point where they now only trail by one after multiple points where they have trailed by up to ten points. Kevin Holden will retort take the court first for the Wildcats as he'll be the inbounder coming out of the break. Excuse me, he'll be the receiver of the inbound as it was Angelo Lloyd, the inbounder. 
Now, here we are, as the ball's kicked out right a couple times, found its way to Lloyd, and now it's going to be sent over to Maverick Sanders. And now whistles, and this one's going to be sent over in the possession of the opposition. Yeah, it looks like that foul will be called against Cabin Holden. A little bit too physical. Didn't quite see it, but whatever it was, the rest did. That'll be his second, Wildcats second, and the Falcons will bring the ball back down the court. So now a chance for the Falcons to take the lead over the Wildcats. Can't be slipping here. As now this one being moved around a little bit, and it's Anderson working against Sanders. Now he drives, puts up the shot, and it's off. Maverick Sanders pops it up, and just like that, the Cats have it again. Here's Mc Here is McNeil in the corner. He's got the ball. He's going to drive, puts the shot up, and he gets it to land. Big shot right there as Wildcats desperately need to get some kind of momentum offensively. Doesn't have to be a huge run. Just here and now shots to try and keep that padding for any big Falcons plays. So now trying to score on the interior. They lose it momentarily, but still in their possession. This one tossed to the outside with yet another one of their dangerous scorers, but he's unable to do anything there as Cameron McNeil reels in the rebound. Now he drives, kicks over to Lloyd for three. This one is up and off. And it's going to be rebounded by Seattle Pacific University. A foul maybe should have been called there, but we're not going to think about that too much as moving it around the perimeter is the opposition. It is Anderson with the ball in hand, working against Cameron McNeil. He drives, puts up the shot, and won't be able to get it to go. So they've been able to shut him down on practically every part of the court but the perimeter so far this second half. And now the shot's going to be nailed by Cameron McNeil on the other end to give him 15. Mid-range McNeil right there. That's what we call him on the broadcast sometimes, or at least I do. <laughs> and the Wildcats up five now. And so moving out left are the Falcons. It's Anderson once again finding himself in possession of the Rock. He's going to move out right now and put up the mid-range, and he'll answer back quickly to Cameron McNeil's two. And it looks like uh, Maverick Sanders got a little bit tripped up on the screen and limping a bit down the court. That would be a tough loss for the Wildcats if he shows any lingering effects. As now Sanders kicks to Brizzy, who kicks to Holden in the alley-oop score. Alley-oop layup. I love to see it where he can't get up to slam it, but he's making sure a little bit theatrics on those points. And you love to see that. The Cats getting fancy with it as they do lead by four points here. Not a lot of separation, but we'll see if Se Seattle wants to cut it back here. As they put up the shot, nail it, and it's going to entitle them to an and-one opportunity. As Moriarty gets in there, draws the foul, shows a lot of happiness right there from drawing it. Uh, Looks like the foul will be against, I believe, Mitch Brizzy for the Wildcats. So a timeout taken on the court as the Falcons will come back to a and one possibility afterwards. And so the timeout taken on the court. We'll take one, too, and be back in just a moment here on 88 One The Bird, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. in five, four, three, two, one. 88 won the Berg, your music central. Folks, we are back here on not only 88 one but also the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Folks, this is the voice of Ryan Gildersleeve, your play-by-play -play broadcaster for all of tonight's action, alongside Michael Jones, as we look to see what happens in the final 10 minutes of this game between Seattle Pacific and Central Washington. 53 to 48, your score, Central leading it by five. And what a game we have chosen to jump into here as it's been an interesting one so far and only seems to hold more excitement for the remainder of this game. Ten minutes and 45 seconds separate us from the end of regulation at least. We're entering what would roughly be the fourth quarter right here, so any feelings you have from the end of a game where you're not sure who is going to make that big play, who's going to hit that big shot, and what's going to matter, everything matters right now. And speaking of big shots, it looks like Owen Mariarty for the Falcons are going to go to the line, try and finish an and one that began before the break, and cut the lead down to two if he makes it. So a chance here to put his team in a good spot. 
heading back against the Cats. Here it comes. And he's going to nail it. So just like that, cuts the lead down to two. Here comes Kevin Holden looking to extend back out past even the level they were just at. As Holden kicks to McNeil. McNeil now to Sanders. Sanders moving out right, and he's looking for somebody. He's going to find Angelo Lloyd, who is moving himself back up towards the top of the court to take the mid-range shot, which he's unable to connect. This one's going to be rebounded by the Falcons, and they bring this up. Now driving. Easy inside opportunity, and the whistles will blow, as it seems they do every time that Seattle Pacific goes down the court. Almost a shot-for-shot shot recap of the play right before the timeout as Moriarty drove in, drew the foul. It doesn't get it to fall, however, the foul by Cameron McNeil, but he will go to the line trying to shoot two, and if he hits both, would tie the game up for the Falcons. So now here's the first. He's going to make it. He is an 80% free throw shooter on the season for SPU, as it looks like there's a substitution for the Wildcats. Brizzy subbing out, and in comes the bot Hector. And this looks like it might be one of the bigger shots of the game. He's going to nail it. So 53 is the score that we're tied at here. And now it's... Cameron McNeil tossing out right a couple of times as he makes his way to Kevin Holden. Holden now over to Hector. Hector moving out left. He's going to hit McNeil. McNeil drives, puts up the floater, gets it to go. Big shot right there. He's got 17 on the night right now, and any points he can provide to this team right now are huge. As now making their way down the quarter of the Falcons. They trail by two, which is basically where we've sat at in terms of separation all night. Now, moving their way in, trying to find somebody is Anderson. He will kick it out to Z. Now here's Maui Z driving to the interior, and he's going to torch past Kevin Holden, but he's not going to be able to make the shot. Is now Maverick Sanders with the ball in hand for the Cats. He's going to toss to the corner. Now out to Angelo Lloyd for three. Unable to knock it down. Samad Hector, though, reeling in the rebound, and the Cats are in action here as this one's going to be knocked out of bounds by Anderson, and the Wildcats retain. Great ball movement right there by the Wildcats. Trying to find a shot inside, but swinging it around, finding the open shot. Doesn't get it to fall, but because of great rebounding by Hector, they'll still have the ball in their possession with about 20 seconds left on the shot clock. And so we'll see if how they react coming off of coming off of the slate break there. Kevin Holden going to be the receiver of the inbound as he heads out right. He hands it off to McNeil. McNeil now to Lloyd. Lloyd to Sanders. A lot of ball movement here as Sanders drives, puts up the shot, misses, and Samad can't reel in the rebound. That would have been every central player bringing in the ball as it's a steal from Sanders. Sanders to Holden. Holden to Hector, and Hector is shut down. Now Maverick Sanders gets the rebound and does it himself. What a big possession right there by Sanders, making great ball movement, getting a big rebound, and getting a big putback right there at the end as the Wildcats now have a four-point lead. That's going to give the Cats just enough separation as they're going to call a foul. A foul is going to be called on Maui Z, jumping straight into a on-the-move defender. And it looks like, yeah, that will be a call against Cameron McNeil in favor of Z on the sideline. Could have gone either way, but at the same time, you think a lot of 50-50 calls have gone the Wildcats way so far tonight, and Perhaps the referee might even that out later on in the game. Who knows? As 8 minutes and 30 seconds separate us from the end of this matchup. And it looks like McNeil and Lloyd for the Wildcats both taking a break. I assume they're going to get a little bit of rest for that last push in the game as we have about nine, eight and a half minutes left to go. And so now kicking the ball around the perimeter a couple of times is SPU. Now moving his way in, taking the spin move. He's going to drive, kick this one out, and it's Anderson. Shaw Anderson working against Maverick Sanders. He kicks this one out back to his primary ball handler. They're looking for a three-point opportunity, or so it appears, as they lose the ball, and now the opportunity is there. Takes the mid-range shot, unable to hit. And the Wildcats almost lose the ball in its entirety because of them own fighting for it. So now Samad Hector with it in his hands. He's going to not pass it here as he drives in. Loses it. Foul is called. 
Look at the drive on the inside. Got a little bit lucky right there by the defense deciding to go in and try and fight for it as it looked like he was losing the ball anyways. But either way, the Wildcats will hold on to the ball. The shot clock will reset and a foul will go against Owen Moriarty. One of the bigger players so far in the second half here for the Falcons. That's his fourth foul and he will be going to the bench now to sit it out. So a bit of a lucky break right there for the Wildcats. Yeah. As now Jordan Clark will check into the game in the exchange for Kevin Holden. We will see how the Wildcats want to handle this here as Samad Hector receives the inbound. It's going to kick over to Maverick Sanders. Sanders to Clark, and we start things over. And now here's the screen coming from Swilly. He's going to drive out left with it, but not take it. Now Swilly takes the mid-range shot, gets it to go. Big hit right there by number three. Extends the lead to six points as we have seven minutes and 40 seconds remaining. Now Shaw Anderson will bring it up, coming up the left lane. He tosses this one forward. And now they'll look for the shot opportunity against Samad Hector in the post. Shot is put up, but it appears that it's waved off. I didn't think that was a foul call. A little bit too much aggressiveness on both sides right there. Hector gets called for the foul, only his first, but the fifth for the Wildcats. At the time, that will be taken with the... Falcons looking to inbound it coming out of it. So not exactly where you want to be if you're the Wildcats heading into the break, but one way or another, ladies and gentlemen, they took a timeout on the court, so we'll take one too and be back in about 30 seconds here on 88 One The Bird, your Music Central. Your Music Central, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the action. Brian Gildersleeve alongside Michael Jones bringing you all the action here for 88-1 The Berg as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Folks, 59-53 to are our current score as the Wildcats hold on to a six-point lead with about seven and a half remaining in the second half of action. Folks, it's been a good one so far, and we expect it to end that same way. The Wildcats will come out of the break, uh, waiting on free throws to be shot. After, a, or excuse me, waiting for an inbound to be tossed. The Wildcats have committed five fouls in this half, as opposed to four by Seattle Pacific. And now we will look to see how the inbound flies as they move it around a little bit, trying to draw some sort of three-point opportunity off the inbound. They're unable. Now Shaw Anderson's going to get Sanders to jump, and he's not going to pull the trigger on it. So shooting this one over, and it's going to be stolen by Samad Hector. Jump ball goes in Central Washington's favor. Big play right there by Hector, getting on the ground, diving for the ball. And while it's not technically a steal, you might as well consider it one as they were able to get the ball back going their way. And with a six-point lead, every possession matters. And let's see if the Wildcats can try and move the ball around and get some kind of good look. Seth Dawson kicks out left to Clark. Clark now out right to Swilly. Swilly into Samad Hector, and Hector's going to drive. He's going to pop to Swilly, and that's going to be that. There we go. That was a big look we're talking about. Another bucket for number three is they have an eight-point lead now. And so now eight points separate the Wildcats and their opponents here tonight as the th toss is going to be to the corner for a wide-open three. It's off the back iron, though, and rebounded now by Jordan Clark. Clark's going to move his way up and search for somebody as he goes to Swilly with it. Swilly's going to come in down the left side wing, and he's going to toss it back up to Dawson. Dawson to Swilly. Swilly moving out right. He hits Sanders. Sanders now tosses up to Hector. Hector to Clark for three. This is up and off. Rebounded by Sanders, and he's going to be unable to hit on the second chance opportunity, but the third chance opportunity goes a little bit better as he misses, but at least reels in the foul. Sanders has been working his rear off all half long, and right now it is paying off big time as he's able to get in there, get some rebounds against what looks like a bit of a tired Falcons uh, post group, and go to the line. Yeah, he's got a chance here to give the Wildcats a 10-point lead, which is quite exactly what they would like right now as he gets ready for his first of two, and he'll miss it. 
for the first shot. No good for Maverick Sanders. Kevin Holden will check into the game along with Cameron McNeil in the places of Jordan Clark and Seth Dawson. So a different backcourt here for the Wildcats, but everything else will remain the same. Sanders now getting ready for the second shot of this trip to the charity stripe. He puts it up off the back iron, rebounded, and so nothing coming Central's way from that trip to the line. And just like that, the Falcons have an opportunity to take some points away from the Wildcats in a big way. Moving their way out right now. Samad Hector there to provide the defense. It's tossed around a couple more times, and they're still working around the perimeter, now driving in. Working against Hector, he gets the block. Samad Hector with not only the block, but the rebound. And that's what he loves to do. Kevin Holden receiving the pass from McNeil. He's going to drive now against two defenders. Shooting out to Sanders for three. And this one is up and off. And Hector unable to bring in the rebound. He had it multiple times, but you take Bradley Swilly away from that situation. He's got it. Just an unfortunate situation where too many people are going for the rock at once. I yeah, see. You love the aggressiveness, but when two people are fighting, that's not great when it's on your own team for a ball like that. So now moving out right is Maui Z. He's going to put up a quick layup, and there was no contestion on that. You need to be able to get in there and at least get a hand in his face to slow it down because easy shots like that are going to get the Falcons back in the game if you are a Wildcat. And so now moving out right is Kevin Holton. He's going to kick back to Samad Hector. Hector's going to bring his way to the post, but he's going to lose the ball on his way up towards the rim. This one now tossed up, and the shot is attempted, but it's going to, wow. So that shot will be good. The foul will be called in an and-one opportunity for the Falcons as the Wildcats now take away a lot of the momentum they just built. Big transition play by the Falcons, getting the ball up to Lettenden, and then rather than taking the shot, gets the defender to commit dishing it over to Penninger, and by the time the defense adjusted, not only does he hit the shot, but he draws the foul and a chance to make it a three-point play in a very clutch moment. And so this shot's going to land, and that's going to cut the separation to three. The differential between these two teams has fluctuated a lot throughout this game, with Central Washington leading by as much as 10. Kevin Holden now is going to head out right as he hits Maverick Sanders. Sanders going to go into the post with Hector, who's going to get the shot to go. So they answer back quickly, bringing back all but one point. Big play by Hector. Five-point game, five minutes to go. And so now is Anderson with the ball. He's matched up against Sanders. Two players with very similar play styles. As Sanders is going to get the wraparound steal. Now Bradley Swilly kicks out to Holden. Holden to Sanders. Drives. And he's unable to keep the ball in his hand. As now Samad Hector looking to produce some fast break defense. And the block by Samad. Right there. That is his way of saying sit down. This is my post. You're not going to get anything easy right here. And while there was no foul on the play, it was a big block right there. Falcons will hold on to the ball, but you know he's not going to make that shot again. He is going to think about that every time he drives. And that's got to be a confidence breaker if you are SPU watching a shot like that get sent back hard. As now Maui Z works against Cameron McNeil. He heads out left, now going back out right. He's got Maverick Sanders in front of him. He kicks out left. Cameron McNeil now guarding against Anderson. Anderson driving. This is a mismatch, and he's not going to be able to get the shot to go. So Ahmad Hector brings in the rebound. And here comes Bradley Swilly. Ball in hand here on the right side. He's got Kevin Holden. And now Holden is looking for something. He's going to drive out left. Now shooting it back out right. He hits Sanders. Sanders going to hit Swilly. Swilly hits Samad. And here's Hector driving his way in against multiple defenders from SBU. It finds its way out of bounds. It'll be an interesting call. Timeout is taken on the play with seven on the shot clock. And as they take the timeout, we'll take one, too. Be back in just about 30 seconds for the remainder of this game here on 88 won The Berg, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream.
88.1 The Berg, your music central as well as Central Washington University Athletics live stream. Folks, we are back. Three minutes and 47 seconds separate the Wildcats from a trip back home as they currently lead five points over Seattle Pacific in a game that doesn't look to be that close. The eye test has definitely served Central Washington right throughout the course of this game, especially over the last couple minutes of game time with a couple of huge blocks by Samad Hector showing off his ability to reject the basket in the post. So now as we come out of the break with Central having the five-point lead, their opponents have entered the bonus. And we will see if Central is able to keep them contained as we come back to a offensive possession for the Wildcats. And so on the court, we await the inbound. Bradley Swilly appears that he will be the inbounder. If the referee would give him the ball, we could continue to watch basketball. As Swilly now is looking for somebody, he's going to toss this one in, and he's going to find Samad Hector up top over everybody. Now Hector on the perimeter is going to kick this one over to Kevin Holden. Holden's going to take the three, and this one's going to be off, but rebounded by Samad as he drives in and gets blocked. So not a whole lot there. He had a wide-open Bradley Swilly three behind him, but unable to move away before the shot is rejected. Now Maui Z bringing it up once again, taking a step back a bit close to that half-court line. Now he takes a step back once more, and he kicks it around a couple of times. His guards sharing the love as they move in. Now here's the kick back. Maui Z to the corner, now up and over. Here's Anderson, puts up the shot over Hector, and he gets it. That's a tough shot right there. Great ball moving by the Falcons to get it into their key guy on the inside. And a three minutes separate this game. Three points separate these teams. We'll see how they react as Cameron McNeil drains the mid-range. Mid-range McNeil right there, putting the team back up five. He's got 19 on the night leading the Wildcats. Yeah, you might as well go down there and engrave his name into it because practically every spot is his. As here's Maui Z kicking it out left. Now driving in from the perimeter, here's Samad Hector guarding the ball handler. Almost loses it out of bounds, but he's going to kick it back to Z. So now it's swapped right back to him. He's going to drive against Samad, and this shot's going to go nowhere as Samad brings in the rebound. And it looks like a foul's going to get called against the Falcons, trying to swipe the ball away from uh, Hector off the rebound. That'll be against Moriarty, his fifth foul for the Falcons, so we may not be seeing him again tonight. That's six for SPU on the half. And that's exactly what you wanted to see if you're Central Washington. Get them one step closer to putting themselves in foul trouble. We saw how it worked out last half. Once we got into the bonus, practically everything came easier from there. So we'll see if Central Washington is able to come out of this break and put something together to put some points on the board quickly before their opponents are really able to think. As we do come out of the break, 2 minutes and 23 seconds is not a lot of time for them to work with, so anything they can do to hold off their opponents will be worth it. I'm not sure why the rest were discussing that one. It looked like they were discussing whether it could have been a flagrant, possibly, which I'm not sure if that was really a, in question, but a quick little break, and the Wildcats bring the ball up down the court now. So a little bit more fresh is every player on the court as Kevin Holden going to make his way up. He's sitting here on the logo, gives his opponent a smile, and gives it over to Hector. Hector now to McNeil. McNeil moving out left. He's going to take the three, and the heat check isn't going to fall for him, so... Stick to the mid-range, I guess. As now here comes Maui Z. He's going to kick this one out left. And here comes Anderson. Working against Maverick Sanders. That's exactly what he wanted there. As he cuts the lead for the Wildcats down to three. I would say right there, Sanders got caught a little bit off guard by Anderson with the move and, and trying to catch back up. Hits him just a little bit going up for the shot. Now Anderson can make it a three-point play. And with how little time there is left, every point is crucial. That it is. As here's the shot. And it's off. Rebounded by Samad Hector. And that's what you wanted if you are a Wildcat fan. Kevin Holden now with the ball in hand. He'll make himself make his way forward past the middle of the court. 
Looks like they're going to slow the ball down a little bit, try and drain some clock off as they do have the clock on their side. Now Kevin Holton moving out left. He's going to kick to Swilly. Swilly now driving. Not able to score, but he draws the foul, which puts the Wildcats in the bonus. Big thing to notice, so like you said, both teams are now in the bonus. Nobody in the double bonus yet, but any foul is going to lead to free throws. Thankfully right here, it is two for Swilly as it was a shooting foul. And so it's going to give them what they need. Swilly, a 92% free throw shooter on the season, going to line, and he knocks the first. As Swilly's going to hit the free throw, now we await the second. Looks like the crowd's as quiet as they can be right now. And that shot's going to go. Yeah, when you start hearing Pop-Tart rappers in the crowd, you know it's quiet. We don't even sell Pop-Tarts. Yeah. <laughs> now driving up is Maui Z. He's going to kick this one out left to Anderson. And now here's Anderson on the move. Working in against Sanders. He puts up the shot, and this one's going to go. There we go. This is what the Falcons want. They want the ball in the hands of Anderson. 25 on the night, and I feel like he might be adding that total with about a minute to go. As Kevin Holden's going to dribble out about as much time as he can. We're under a minute now. 17 seconds on the shot clock, so that's about as much time as they have to play with here. And he's going to move out left. Kick this one to Samad Hector. Hector in the corner has Swilly, and he's not going to kick it out. Instead, giving it to Holden, who will miss the three. Now it's Cameron McNeil getting the ball back on this one. We might have to see some intentional fouling by SPU, which is exactly what's going to happen. 35 and a half seconds will be on the clock as Central Washington puts up two more shots. It won't show on the stat sheet, but that was a huge play right there by Hector, as if he needs anything more to the stat sheet with how well he's playing tonight. Exactly. Able to, able to get in, poke the ball away on that rebound. McNeil gets it, and now with the timeout, we'll see the Wildcats trying to add to a lead in just a second. And so, folks, with them taking a timeout on the court, we'll take one, too. We'll be back in just about 30 seconds here on 88 One The Bird, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. so disrespectful in so many ways. And in five, four, three, two, one. 88 won the bird, your music central. Ladies and gentlemen, we rejoin the action as Central Washington leads it by three points. 35 and a half remaining on the clock. 67 to 64, your score. So with Cameron, me, was say with McNeil going to the line right now, he's already knocked down a couple free throws so far tonight, two for two. He's got an opportunity to move himself above 20 points on the night as the first shot will fall and he's going to get it. And it being a one and one, that was a huge moment right there as well as it gives him a shot to hit a second one rather than being one and done. And now, as you mentioned, an opportunity to further extend the lead. Cameron McNeil bangs them both. 69-64, your score. The Wildcats have 30 seconds to ensure that there is no points put on the board, or at least less than five put on the board by their opponents, the Falcons. This one tossed out right. Moving it around, he's going to get a jam late in the game, and they're going to call a timeout on Seattle Pacific's side. As they do that, we will too. We'll be back in about a minute here on 88 One The Bird, your music central, as well as the Central Washington University Athletics live stream. I was like, you could tell right there that the defensive plan, do not let Anderson get free. Because yep. the help defender didn't even think about coming over right uh -uh. there. For the... Which, honestly, I wouldn't have. Oh, no. no that, I would say every single time that I've played in a game with this situation, it's like, okay, Michael, you do not move from this spot if that's where he is. Exactly. I know they're not going to miss that layup, but you'd rather that than risk a three, especially right. with how hot he's been tonight. Right. And in five, four, three, two, one. 
88 on the Burke Your Music Central. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back as we also transfer our audio to the Central Washington University Athletics live stream here tonight. There's 22 seconds on the clock. Bradley Swilly receives it and he's fouled after about a second comes off. So 21 seconds and two free throws coming for Cameron McNeil, or excuse me, for Bradley Swilly. He's shot 91% from the line so far this season, three for four on the night as well just who you want to see at the line I mean there's a variety of Wildcats who can get it from the free throw from the free throw line but I mean it, it, really if you wanted somebody to be in a situation like this you couldn't have picked much better big thing to note this is still one and one any future fouls will be two shots but right here he has to hit one to get the second and he will hit the first that extends the central lead back to four. And really, to feel confident here, he needs to make this second one. Yes, because any shot right now, if he misses this by the Falcons, will cut the lead down to one possession. And so the second shot coming for Bradley Swilly. And the new Wildcat hits them both. 71-66. Your Wildcats lead it by five. And it looks like they'll make a sub as Swilly will come out, and in goes Jeanette on the defensive side. So Colby Jeanette coming in to provide some perimeter defense. Here's Maui Z going around the corner. He's going to kick this one out to Anderson for three. He's unable to hit it, and that's going to do it. But just like that, ladies and gentlemen, Angela Lloyd pulls in the rebound, and 71-66 to is your score as he's going to put up two shots here. And right now you have to imagine that the Wildcats are in a very comfortable spot right now, five-point lead. We have seen many strange things happen, so I'm not counting anything yet, but having a guy at the line right now with the chance to extend the lead, you have to be happy if you're a Wildcat fan right now. As here's Angela Lloyd making the first shot. And he's got an opportunity now to extend the Wildcat lead to seven, which would put this game more than out of reach for SPU. Second one coming now, and here it is. He's going to nail them both. So just like that, the Wildcats win this game off of some great free throw shooting in the final about 40 seconds of game time. Maui Z going to try and put something on the board to make this a little bit less embarrassing, but it's not going to do anything. As Central Washington University wins both their games here tonight. They beat Cent Seattle Pacific University in both matchups to advance themselves, not only to 3-1 and one on the women's side of things, but to 2-2. Two and two here on the men's side of things in conference play. So ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly what you wanted to see and we're not going to go far. We're going to give you our post-game wrap-up right here before we hop off and we push it off until this next weekend when you can listen to some Central Basketball next. Folks, this was a great game. Your Central Washington Wildcats win it by a final score of 73 to 66 and what a game it was. Cameron McNeil took over, putting up 21 points from practically anywhere on the court that you could think of. He was great. The perimeter defense was there for all of the Wildcats, really. Uh, not allowing as many three-point opportunities as you may have thought as watching this game. There was definitely a lot hooked up. We talked about how the rain was going to fall and folks, that did, did. It was a crazy game to watch from all sides of the court. And folks, lucky for us, it ended in a seven-point victory for your Central Washington Wildcats. Michael, what kind of day did we just witness and what can you tell me about these Cats wins. I think right now you have to think is a great win, not because they followed the pattern and got the win, but because both the men's and the women's team for Central played out of their comfort zone. They were forced into interesting situations by very physical and very heated South Pacific teams. And while it may not show in the stat sheet for every player, everybody came out, gave it their all. And you have to think that this is a great thing moving forward as you see, they can win close, they can win high scoring, they can win low scoring scoring and now the Wildcats are going to go on the road next week for a couple games and they're going to look to try and continue this momentum against their other GNAC opponents. And so folks with that your Central Washington Wildcats record multiple victories today as they rewrite the script from Thursday and give themselves an opportunity to move forward as one of the more highly regarded teams here in the Great Northwest Athletic Conference. Ladies and gentlemen for Central Washington University's athletics live stream and for 88 won the Berg, this is Ryan Gildersleeve, Michael Jones, and all of 88 won the Berg signing off.